Hey, it's Matt again with Splitboard HQ and AQ Outdoors just here on my third day up on the Splitboard with Simon. And today we have Rylan with us as well. Rylan is out at his first day on the Splitboard, so it'll be interesting to see from his perspective as well. We're in Kanadaskis country today, and again, it's early season, another day on the hill, another day of learning, and I'm looking forward to it. So one of the things we see a lot with split borders and skiers is when you get these sort of like well used skin tracks or wind buffed stuff where it's kind of icy and you're traversing across it what we don't want to happen is we don't want our skis we don't want to rely on the skins and the ski to be flat because it wants to slide down so what we actually do we want to engage the edge and keep our ski as flat as possible as i'm moving across this slightly icy like hard packed slope with my uphill ski, which is the straight edge, I kind of step it in and I roll my knee into the slope. And that creates a flat platform down here rather than sliding down flat. So we kind of step it in, roll the knee up, that flattens the ski. And if it's really slippery, we can stop the next one in, roll the knee in. So that's a really handy pointer, I think, for split borders because it's something we struggle with a bit. So we've just kind of walked up through pretty old forest, right? So we're pretty comfortable that it's not avalanche terrain, big old trees, low angle. Behind me here, we can see that our exposure to avalanche terrain changes very quickly. We go from big old growth, or not old growth, but old trees into much smaller trees. And we can see up into the alpine there that we've got overhead hazard, right? So when we're traveling around in the backcountry, we want to kind of be aware of our surroundings and how that affects our exposure to avalanche terrain again not a ski guide ast instructor so take it with that with that lens on it but uh yeah we just want to be aware within our group and we try and verbalize it just to be like okay we're transitioning our exposure let's be uh heads up and we go from there we talked earlier about transitioning from the woods into sort of more open avalanche terrain which we are now here we can identify that by what we've got above us We've got a bunch of like a lot of little trees, broken trees, in amongst some big trees. So this obviously gets very large avalanches fairly regularly through here, right? If we're in this terrain, we want to be really sure that the overhead hazard is not of concern on the day like today. Still very early season, not a lot of snow up there, so we're we're kind of out of harm's way at the minute. However, as the season goes on, we get more snow load here, and we're going to have quite a long time where we'd be exposed to these three avalanche paths up top. So the very basic is, is A, we want to be super confident that we're not going to trigger something above us or it's not going to release naturally. And then if we are moving through here, even if we're confident with it, we're going to spread out 30, 40 meters, something like that. Just so if something did happen, we're not all piled on top of one another. So it's just best safe travel practices that we just try and do all the time and make it a habit. Rylan, how's it feeling so far? Going good. Yeah, enjoying it? Going up that part, we'll see what happens when we go down. Yeah, this part's tricky. We're we supposed to be going up. <laughs> nice. Success. So basically moved from old timber there to semi-recently destroyed timber here, which tells us we're in avalanche terrain again. And we're aiming to get into the old timber over there. Lots of tracks above us, which, you know, doesn't necessarily, certainly doesn't mean that there's no chance of an avalanche, but Early season, pretty comfortable with the conditions, but safe travel practices. We're still gonna spread out 20 meters or so until we get into that old timber over there. Just good habits to get into. So the person in front is gonna be a lot slower than the subsequent people because of the braking trail bit. As the subsequent people, it's your job to keep the distance. This looks like really fun terrain. This is gonna be a good ride down. Yeah. Yeah. As long as we don't hit any rocks, <laughs> it's still pretty thin. worked our way over to the other side of that little chute there and uh, going up the tree line weaving our way back and forth continuing up here you can see the guys further up and then we might cut through the trees to the next little uh, slope down just because this one as you can see is fairly tracked out
Okay, so I'm following Simon's track here. He is doing all the trailblazing right now. Nice of him to do that, but we're following it up through this little ridge line up and over. And yeah, we'll see what's on the other side. I'm on the 161 niche fathom this time around. So first time riding this board for me. And so far it's been a decent climb, not too hard. We'll see how it performs on the way down. So we caught up to Simon and uh, looks like he's digging a snow fort of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> Just a booter for you, mate. Yeah, there we go. And then a big booter to wind slab landing. Yeah, <laughs> straight into the trees. Straight, yeah, and <laughs> onto the wind slab. So A, you'll hit the tree and then you'll break both your femurs. It's gonna Perfect. Be awesome. That's exactly what I want to hear. Totally, totally. No, uh, yeah, it's early season. Haven't dug in the snow yet. So just having a little dig down. We're on a ridge top here and it's very firm. Uh, and then there's, you know, it's basically what the avalanche forecast has said. It's moderate hazard, but uh, yeah, just poking around really. A lot of people in AST courses ask, you know, when does a snow pit or when does a compression test mean it's good to go? It's really just a piece of the puzzle, right? Like you just, a snow pit or a compression test here could be very different to one just over there. So it takes a little bit of time and, and such to... Uh, to learn how to interpret those, but this right now is just for interest's sake. Just having a look how the snowpack's shaping up in this particular zone in K country. We're just gonna do a little probe test just to see how deep the snow actually is here. It seems like it's pretty significant for... That's wild, 165 centimeters just here. Crazy. At tree line. What aspect? East, no. Is it east? Ish. Yeah, northeast aspect. Wind blown? Yes, definitely loaded because there's rock there, rock there, rock there. There's just good early season Rockies. There's more snow than I thought. This is where all the snow in the Rockies is right now, I guess. <laughs> right where you're standing. Right where I'm standing. Turns out we're going to transition into snowboard mode here and uh, cut across to our riding zone. Uh, so Simon's going to show us how to transition in some steeper terrain and some not so great snow. So yeah, transitioning as you know, you're not always on a nice flat bench. So the key thing you're trying to achieve here is to not have your snowboard go downhill without you, right? Um, in powder, it's relatively easy because you know the snow does has a ton of friction to it, so it does most of the work for you. But here, the first thing we've got this hard wind slab on the top. The first thing we want to do is make sure we have a pretty solid platform for both our feet. So you're going to take a moment just to... And this works with power too, obviously. Okay, so I'm going to get myself sorted and then I'm going to make sure my poles... I put them on the downhill side just in case, like if a ski does decide to disappear, you've got something as a brake there, right? Like it could potentially stop it sliding away. My process... This is not necessarily right, this is just how I do it. I'll take the top ski off first. Again, you've got stuff in the way to stop it sliding down. And then I'll just make sure that it's standing vertical and it's not going anywhere. Now I can focus and concentrate on this ski here, which has less to stop it from sliding downhill, but I've easily got both hands. Right, so I've got that off. All my stuff is sorted, nothing's sitting flat. What we see sometimes is people will put their skis upside down and you just start to ball up with snow and everything in the binding. So it just become a bit of a pain when it comes to putting the board back together. So the next piece, you're probably gonna take your pack off. Some people don't. At times I'll just put my skins in here and I'm, I don't need to, but I am for now. And again, goal is like here, if I just put my pack down, it could go for a ride, right? So I wanna make sure that I have somewhere that's kind of out of the way. And relatively stable so that it's not going to go anywhere and it's not getting in my way you can see what we're working with so now i'm all kind of set to get everything ready to go i'm going to take the binding off first and i'm going to make sure i put it upside down with all of the different binding brands putting them upside down is better because you just get less snowballing up in the bottom here in the rockies we get away with it because it's so dry but especially in the coast and and wetter and wetter snowpack it you really want to try and keep as little snow on the bottom of the bindings as possible so 
we just get those bad boys out of the way. Upside down, not going anywhere. Just gonna flip this guy over. Start with the skins. This is just the way I do it. It's not right or wrong. Put the nose down, the front down. Start peeling the skin off. When I'm about halfway, flip it over and then very easily pull the second part off. And I'm gonna put them straight in my backpack so there's no risk of them going sliding down this. It's about 30, 35 degrees, something like that. But pretty slippery. Then I'm gonna rinse and repeat. Then I'm gonna seal my backpack up again so nothing like really risks falling out. So then from there, essentially we're just making sure we've got a good firm grip on the board. And then we're gonna just go through the whole process of putting the board together, right? Exactly the same as in mellower terrain. We're just gonna take a little bit more care and attention to make sure that it's well and truly fastened into the snow so that it can't take off on us. So here, we're making sure, again, the buckles are on the outside, right? So these are set up so that the buckles go to the outside, same as when you're skinning. Again, just making sure everything's solid, everything's firm, however works for you to get your board together. But you just really, again, the outcome here is to get your board together without losing any of your gear. <laughs> so that's it. Everything's secure, everything's stable. We're now going to just use this bench here to actually get onto the board. Make sure you do your boots up as well. We often see people forget to tighten their boots after touring and the first turn is just kind of this floppy mess. So yeah, just make sure you get in there before you get going. Do your boots up as you would at the resort and make sure that they're all ready to go so that you're ready to sort of perform in the good snow that you've worked so hard to get to. So if you're using soft boots, don't forget to do that part because it sucks to try and ride downhill without them done. Being someone who rides hard boots a lot, that's one that I'll often forget until my first turn. And then here, going to make sure everything's really solid, really stable. I'm holding on. I've always got a grip on it. I'm going to get my front foot in first. And now I'm worry free because I'm strapped in and the rest of it's kind of gravy and you get your pack on and everything's close by and simple. And if you can just repeat that process or a similar one, then you'll have no dramas getting put together in any sort of situation. All right, so yeah, Ryan and I are just about to cut across. Simon's already made his way over there. And uh, this snow is definitely very firm, so we're just not, gonna... Not the best. Yeah, we're just gonna edge across ever so delicately and see what we, we can find. Here we go. Oh, no, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Oh yeah, it gets way nicer here. Yeah. Way nicer. Yeah, this is this is pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. So there's basically here really... you have very very soft slab, yeah. then soft, and then uh, another crust underneath. Yeah. So if you're riding, so what I would suggest at the minute is there's still going to be sharks buried. Yeah. So you're just going to take it. Take it easy. easy. Yeah. So you're basically going to ski fall line down here, yeah. and then traverse out with a bit of speed and just get yourself up high. So you're out of the, you know, you're out of the line of fire, basically, yeah. right? Yeah, go for it, man. So I'm out here is going to yeah. get shallow. Yeah, I'm going to cut just through here Perfect. and then back in. Sounds good. All right. Go for it, man. Have fun, sir. Don't hit a rock. Don't hit a rock. <laughs> Woo! to get the slash even yeah. though it goes to nothing all right so we had a good run down overall some nice little pockets of powder and then some wind blown and a little bit of avalanche debris to contend with but uh yeah we're headed back up for round two we're gonna do a little bit more through the trees that should be a lot of fun but i think rylan and i are feeling the burn on our lungs, that's for sure. Simon is definitely powering through like normal. <laughs> Bushwhacking. 
made it up to the top of the ridge and we are rewarded with that view, which is pretty awesome. Simon's heading through here to find a little spot we can drop in. So nice. If you're traveling at ridge line and, you're, and you know these cornices, you kind of want to steer a pretty wide berth of them. So you can use your probe. So I'm hitting the ground there. Still hitting the ground there. Still hitting the ground there. So I know that at least to here, I'm on the ground. I'm above the ground. However, this is a pretty stiff slab and cornices, if they break off, can actually peel off from way further back. So where I'm standing right now, if this was a major cornice, is not necessarily a safe place to be, even though I still am on flat ground and away from and away from the uh, and I'm still over rock. We've got one more. And that's definitely going. That's all the way through. So that's like overhanging there and it's actually hitting the ground underneath the cornice, like where it's overhung. So that's just a really quick and simple way. If you're on a ridge, just playing around and knowing where, where, you, where you're at in regards to the corners versus the land, steer a wide berth of them is the rule. This is fine. Oh, nope. <laughs> okay, so. Flipboard is on one side of the tree and the other. This is a good, good scenario to be in. I think I'm gonna unstrap. It's like the same elevation as the base of sunshine to the village. Wow. But in a much foreshortened space of time. The snow is not too bad in here, so we'll see how it goes. It's still pretty early though, so we'll be a little bit cautious. But... Yes, we will. <laughs> I made it down that tree line there is so fun there's so many little pockets of really good snow definitely worth the second trek up the hill what an awesome experience so stoked now i'm just pathfinding my way by myself simon and rylan went a different route so yeah i'm kind of navigating back to the road which is just through the trees that way looks like i found the track that's a good thing. And I came out fairly close to the road too. So bonus points for that one. There the boys. Perfect timing. 